Hello friends, this is Soft Critical Automaton, your mysterious shadow in the darkness, the creeping sensation that something is wrong in the back of your mind for the evening, and today it's time for the next episode of my Dishonored Let's Play. So uh, before we zoom into the kennels and see one of the final two remaining zones for this uh, chapter of the game, I just want to mention that if you have been commenting on my videos, um, I, I, I respond to every comment, either to give it a like just to show, show I've seen it, or to actually give a verbal response. If I haven't done that, it means your comment is invisible to me. YouTube's algorithms are incredibly aggressive when it comes to uh, deleting whatever it thinks is a bot comment. This means that there is a huge false positive rate and it just hides comments automatically. There's nothing I can do to recover those comments. Sometimes I can see them via email notifications, sometimes I cannot, but there's definitely a big discrepancy between the number of comments listed and the num uh, on the app and the number of comments it will actually show me. So if I don't respond to you, that's um, blame YouTube, blame Google for being evil. That's not, that's not me. Um, I really appreciate all the comments anyway, regardless. Just want to say that before we go. But anyway, let's go! So amongst their many and various crimes, the Overseers are very fond of um, training dogs to attack witches, which is um, a weirdly specific thing to do. They believe that um, their carefully trained dogs can smell magic. No one's going to see them up there, tucked in the luggage rack. It'll, it'll be fine. Um, so yeah, they believe that their dogs can literally smell magic and that they've trained them to smell magic. Whether this is true or not is somewhat up to interpretation. There you are, my I'll fetch you a treat later tonight. Oh, you know that word, do you? Nice to see that um, people who like their pets are the same no matter what. So yeah, there are particular overseers who train the dogs. Uh, dark one. Oh, okay, let's... Buddy, you are incredibly lucky today. Another two inches to your left and you would be... Um, let's just say it would not be my hands that would be in your neck, but in fact, a sharp piece of metal. Um, my incredibly cool folding sword. So, that dog, uh, which he says is sick, is in fact, uh, rabid, I think. Voracious is ill and temperamental. He might attack anyone patrolling. Uh, it's not just that he might attack anyone patrolling, he will attack anyone patrolling. And if you feel like being high chaos, you absolutely can uh, open up the doors and let him out. Which is fun for you and no one else. As you can tell, the dramatic music does not know that I already knocked him out. Now there's another patroller around somewhere. So let's try and avoid doing too many murders today. It's... I gotta say, the smugness with which these people declare themselves to be larger than rats is peculiar to me. It's it's strange that they feel it's necessary to be like, Ha! Rat is smaller than me! I shit bigger than rat. I can kill rat easy. It uh, bespeaks a, an unsound mind, in my opinion. Now where the hell is he? There's definitely one more patroller around here. Um, there's three human NPCs in this area. Two patrol uh, individually and they've already taken them out. A third one patrols with a dog, or a wolfhound as they're called. But um, where the hell is he? So yeah, they train them as part of their uh, witch hunting efforts. Whether or not you can smell magic is perhaps... Can I get on those pipes? No. Um, a matter of yeah, these dogs are going to start barking at me if they see me. A uh, matter of... I mean, I guess it's technically true if you think about it. I don't... Can I knock a dog out? That's the real question, isn't it? I can definitely dart them, and I'm not short on darts. This is unnecessary. Oh, beans, I wasted one. That sucks. Okay. Still, there's a few... Uh oh. I know you're here. So he has definitely seen a knocked out dog and he is upset that the dog is uh, sleeping on duty, as is understandable, really. I should still be able to knock him out if I can get behind him. But um, to grab that other dog I would need to... Uh, you know what, I'm just going to take okay, him out. So, dogs can smell you. 
which is good for them, I guess. Um, this might involve me murdering a man, depending on how this goes. Yes, fantastic. No need for murder. A completely bloodless takedown. Ah, yeah. So the reason why I wanted to knock all these guys out um, is that there's a little bit of treasure hidden around down here, and it's a pain to get if you don't knock these guys out beforehand. Um, yeah, what does this say? That seems pretty much the same thing. Um, don't trust this dog. This dog is a is a betrayer. This dog is a bastard. This dog will willingly hurt you. So uh, there's a few items scattered around in some of these cells, but there's actually a little mini hidden quest to get a, uh, a what do you call it? A safe. Oh, beads. Okay. I mean, it's only a dog. Uh, people people are more upset about people killing dogs than they are about people killing people, as far as I can tell. Um, but anyway, so... Around here somewhere... Can I get in there? How do I get in there? So, uh, way up through here? Uh, or not. I thought there was. There's definitely a way into that room. There's a broken lever somewhere, which I thought was in there, actually. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so one of the other things about these dogs is that um, they can smell you. If you are, you know, hiding, they will spot you uh, in a way that humans won't. They're much more, much more observant if you're on the same plane as them. However, if you get above them, it turns out dogs, um, they smell up about as often as people look up. So if you want to sneak past a dog, do it by being up above them, much like... Uh, well, much like anyone does. So, let's see. Combination lock. Well. What do we know is a universal law about this world? If there is a locked door, there's something good behind it. I don't think there's any locked doors in the game that aren't worth getting behind. And this is no exception. I am having a bit of a sore throat again. Um... My, my COVID ravaged body is still not healed nearly a year later, which sucks. So I'm not reading that one out, but it basically just says, yeah, we train the dogs uh, and then we sell them to the overseers and we never see them again. Um, any that don't complete training get shot. So, um, fun, you know? There's this very kind of industrialized understanding. They either, they're either fit for purpose or they are destroyed as if they are not, you know, living creatures. Which, um... It's kind of how they treat people as well. So, yeah, um, essentially this quest is uh, the seven strictures, which are the seven laws of this um, religion, uh, are numbered, and the three he mentions are the numbers you need to open this, which are the second, the first, and the seventh. I'm not actually going to go through and uh, read that right now because my short-term memory is garbage, so, oh, okay. Uh, ah, oh, beans. Okay, this is, could be bad for this guy. Um, I mean, am I culpable for this guy's? I'm culpable for this guy's death. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm going to call this yet another tragic workplace accident. They shouldn't have been keeping a rat swarm in the incinerator if they didn't want to get in, uh, eaten by rats. In fact, you know what? I'm not taking any culpability for this at all. This is absolutely criminal workplace negligence. This is uh, entirely down to the fault of the people in charge, and they should be reprimanded and forced to resign at the very least. So let's have a quick check just to make sure I haven't missed... Nope, there are no uh, hidden thingamajigs down here. But yeah, so um, you can find books that have each of the strictures listed one by one, and there is one book called The Seven Strictures, which has all of the seven strictures listed, but... Oh, we don't want to go to Holger Square, we want to go out the back. Is that...? Actually, yes, let's go around this way. So, uh, for some reason I thought the kennels lead to the back streets, which is how you exit this chapter, but it actually doesn't. It leads back around to a different part of the front area, which is one where we have actually been, as you can see. So this might be the safest way out, but let's take a quick look. Yes, so this is the, the front courtyard, which I will not be uh, 
causing problems in on the grounds that I... Uh, I mean, I really didn't mean to kill that guy, you know? Let's, let's try and avoid any further deaths today. Which we probably won't, but let's go anyway. So, yep. Um, this tragedy aside, uh, there's not much more to say about this zone. There's vague ramblings that I have in my brain about the... Uh, the uh, the overseers themselves, but pretty much, yeah, they're um, extremely fascist religious zealots who nevertheless somehow do serve a vaguely important societal function, i.e. that of protecting people from witchcraft, except that they go about it in the worst possible way imaginable. Which uh, kind of brings me back to something I was talking about last time. Now, if I'm very, very fast and sneaky, I can avoid killing any of these people, or I can just go out the back way. Um, so if I go this way, then I can get back up high, which gets me through this area without risking killing any more people. I might be missing one or two items, but they're not very valuable ones, so it's not the end of the world. And here we are. So once you're up on this plinth, you can basically... Oh, it's, not called... it's not a plinth, is it? What are these called? External windowsill thingamajigs. Um... Um, that's definitely the technical term, the external win window thingamajigs. Can I, can I reach? If I jump forwards, do you think I can reach? No, I don't think I can. Should we gather for whiskey and cigars tonight? I believe so. One of the various guard behaviours is that um, they repeat various voice lines, which just kind of shows you that they're not alerted. It's a way of telling that the guards you can hear or see are not uh, actively searching for you. There's a way that... Um, stealth games do this, which is really amusing. It's kind of um, a running joke in fans of stealth series. It's almost a trope or a meme in and of itself that you have guards that say, huh, was probably rats, or hmm, I must be imagining things. Like, if you're a guard, your job is to detect things and observe the things that are true and real in the place to an extent greater than that of the average person. It's your job to um, spot things. So if you are just that susceptible to imagining people running around and, and stabbing your friend in the head, and then you're like, well, I guess it was rats, <clears throat> then you probably shouldn't be a guard. But um, this is necessary because these games feel the need to provide feedback to the player. <clears throat> uh oh. Ah, uh, he saw me. He absolutely saw me. Now, um... His buddy probably heard that, but I don't think he saw me, so if I jump up here... Um... Well, okay, no, it's fine, he didn't see. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna go! I'm just gonna leave before this becomes a bigger problem. Anyway, stealth games um, are generally considered to require the need to give a lot of feedback to the player. You want to do this... Ugh, interruptions, interruptions! Out of the way! You expect preferential treatment just because you are her- She will burn. All witches must burn. Bertolt, don't let them take me! I swear I've done nothing wrong! Silence your lying tongue, foul witch! So as you can see, I'm a bit reliant on the crossbow darts at the moment. It's very difficult to choke someone out on a staircase, uh, for reasons that I will explain in a sec. You appeared as if from nowhere. We would both be dead if not for you. We are forever in your debt. I cannot thank you enough. I must get my sister to safety, but first I may know of a way to thank you. There's a safe in the bunkhouse. The combination is two, zero, three. Take what you want, and good luck. So, as you can see, they're not all bad. Some of them understand that their religion requires them to murder innocent people and um, decide to, you know, revoke it, leave, flee, whatever. On the other hand, maybe his sister is a witch, you never know. Um, maybe she's a good witch who doesn't do terrible things to people. Anyway, what the fuck was I talking about before I was interrupted? I did mention that you can't choke people out on the stairs. That's not entirely true. If you get the angle right, you can, but... If you're sneaking and you bump into someone, they become immediately alerted to you. They turn around and startle and then attack you. This is uh, kind of understandable. If there is an assassin creeping up behind you and they bump into your legs, you turn around and would try and either kill them or run away. Uh, I know that that's what I do every time I'm at the shops and I get startled by an assassin creeping up behind me, which is 
mostly just a problem here in Aberdeen. I don't know if it's a, a more widespread problem here in Scotland. Uh, real, real um, endemic assassination problems. So I'm not reading that, but that is essentially just a list of the children that they have abducted recently because they have the legal right to steal the children and raise them as part of their church, which is highly questionable to say the least. Anyway, um, so yeah, if you are standing on a staircase, you are slightly misaligned from the very narrow window that you have to stand in behind someone if you want to knock them out. Uh, it's really finicky. If you're a little bit too far left or right, or you're at the wrong angle, it just does not work and you basically cannot um, choke them out. Similarly, if you're slightly too high or slightly too low behind them, uh. you can't. Ah, oh, it's really tempting to drop on that guy from here. Although, now that I think about it, I literally don't need to knock him out at all. He's just here. Like, if he has a key to that door, he can go through it, but otherwise... He's just going to chill here. There's nothing worth stealing around here. I think there's a couple coins lying under one of these, but it's not worth, not worth the effort of searching it all out. So, uh, yeah, this is the back side of the building. I'll talk a little bit about, about that in a minute, or possibly next time, depending. But first I want to go over here and grab one of the last remaining charms to grab on this chapter. Which is conveniently located over here. Now, luckily I've remembered there's a tripwire here. Nine times out of ten, if I'm playing this casually, I um, forget about that tripwire, blunder straight into it, and um, get myself exploded, which is bad for business and also for watching Let's Plays. Oh, that got most of them. That was pretty good. Physics objects bumping into rats will immediately splat them, um, which means that if you roll a grenade right, you can actually kill most of a swarm with the grenade before it even um, explodes. Trevor, we need another shipment of tools to destroy these bone charms. Though we managed to break down over a dozen last month, there are more coming in from all over Bristol, and the things are resilient. So, they've been destroying occult artifacts, including bone charms. I was asked, should we not tolerate the possession of simple bone charms amongst the populace? Surely this is a trivial matter, merely a cultural practice seen across the aisles, not as terrible as the creation and coveting of more complex occult runes. Such an insidious question. This foolish distinction weakens our mission while the stench of the outsider grows thick around us. Perhaps, as some claim, our ancestors tolerated these cursed practices during the times before our modern empire arose to ease the lives of the lowliest serfs as they paved the roads to civilization. But there is no excuse for witchery in this brighter industrial age. Having adjudicated the trials of many heretics myself, I swear that their eyes, as the clarity of pain took their lives, were grateful to be liberated. So there's clearly a very strong propagandist arm that allows these people to continue doing these terrible things. Um, which, I mean, not a bang on this same drum over and over, but uh, these guys are pretty explicitly intended to be and appear, you know, fascisty. Um, from the point, like, their building from the front looks kind of Reichstag-y. They, um, you know, they all wear uniforms and are disciplined and uh, talk about degeneracy and things like that and um, big red banners with a prominent emblem. It's all it's all borrowing iconography from uh, historical fascist movements, which is a generally understood shorthand, which, you know, is used by media of all sorts. So I need to avoid the streets back here because there are more patrollers, but um, yes. I believe if you're on high chaos, there are more guards around. And can you hear that singing, that crusty scraping whistling noise? That noise is the noise that tells you when there is. It is the singing of a rune or bone charm or some kind of occult artifact, and that's how we know it's nearby. Um, it's implied that this is a less direct influence on anybody who is uh, not already a witch. This is quieter than smashing it with my sword for some reason, I don't know why. Presumably breaking glass is one noise, sword hitting object is another noise, but uh, the crossbow firing is silent maybe. Anyway, so with a bit of luck no one will see us in here. Bartholomew, I've seen the harnesses you're devising in that workshop of yours. If you plan to strap explosives to my precious hounds and make living bombs, you can count me out of your plan. I'm the master of the hounds here and without my training they'll never do as you request. 
So there's clearly a whole another branch here of uh, mad science going on, and it kind of plays into this really common trope of science versus um, magic, which is very fond, a very fond trope of uh, people who make, you know, fa fantasy worlds that have some kind of industrial component or realistic modern component or anything like that. I left you a copy of the ancient music so you might familiarise yourself with the principles I'm employing in this latest variation of Holger's device, or the music box as men call it. As you should know, it produces harmonies that render heretical energies, or magic, inert through counterbalancing mathematical principles. Read the book and then make yourself useful by finding some subjects to test it on. The city's choked with corruption and superstition, so I won't I trust you won't have to look far. So yeah, this is um one of the tricks that these kinds of games pull quite a lot is, you know, foreshadowing problems you'll have to deal with later. And, um, yeah, so in later chapters of the game, you'll find overseers wearing these things, and uh, if they become alert, they start making music, which disables your, uh, your spells. Mm -hmm. It also damages you if you hear it for too long. Uh, let's listen to this. We cannot doubt the effectiveness of Holger's device. Or the mathematical beauty of the music itself. We've seen it in action against the forbidden practices too many times to deny it. But the question no one wishes to ask is, is the incantation itself black magic? The boxes are priceless, but what's inside? And yeah, I'm glad that someone at least is thinking about that. But yeah, so we know that um, all magic comes from the void. A lot of people... Oh, this is just a note basically saying that uh, they haven't figured out how to make crossbows as good as the uh, Whaler gang are using, therefore they should just continue using their handguns instead. Um, but yeah, so incidentally this safe is a fun little puzzle. It's basically just a test of your own perception as a, as a human person because... Uh... Oh, did I fuck up? I think I fucked up. Oh no, here we go. <laughs> the mysterious levitating key, an arcane artifact created by witches. Nah, it's not. So it's just that the key is inside a bottle and um, you need to smash it to get it out, which is nice. It's a perception. It's a, you know, a puzzle that tests your actual human perception. It's not one of those sort of game abstraction things. It's can you notice that there is a bottle with a key in it? And if so, congratulations, you get some treasure. So speaking of treasure, there's a safe up in, up in that room that we're going to go grab now. This is one of the many kind of exploration rewards. There's a lot of um, secrets and like valuable things that you can find in the game primarily by exploring. Um, there's no hint that there's a safe up here with some gold in. It's just on you to explore and find it for yourself. Uh, so... There were a few things I wanted to mention that I haven't gotten around to, but fortunately we probably are going to have one more episode in this uh, section of the game. Possibly including the start of the next chapter, who knows? Um, I think I would have planned this better by this point, but no. I like that someone really cares about their bright hagfish, huh? Like, it's not that great. I don't think it deserves to be in the safe. Maybe that's the one really fancy brand and the rest of it's the garbage that's on the outside. I do love these industrial designs, these really well observed and yet somehow clearly different from those of actual history uh, industrial outposts. Anyway, uh, yes, I'm going to call it here for today and come join me next time for a little bit of the history of this genre, specifically um, the DNA through line from Thief to Dishonored itself and how it uh, influences the existence of the, the Overseer Church, the Abbey of the Everyman, in this game. Anyway, that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. If you like this, you can also follow me on Twitter for updates, stream announcements, and one-tweet micro-reviews, or why not donate to me via Patreon or Ko-fi, or just share my work. Thank you so much for watching.